We got Kyle and Abilene. How you doing? Kyle. Kyle. Oh, hello. Hi, Kyle. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. How are you? Man, it's it's uh, truly an honor to talk to both you guys and 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 the rest of you too, man. I've been trying to get to get in there and talk to you guys for quite a while, and uh, I haven't noticed you guys have uh, had a caller from from Abilene ever. But uh, uh, you had a caller a while back that uh, you were argue, arguing with uh, about uh, abiogenesis, and uh, right as the call ended, you you said um, it's been done uh, creating life from non-life. Uh, go look it up. And uh, uh, as an atheist, uh, um, I was surprised by that. So uh, I did a little bit of research, not very thorough, but I just found the experiments in the 50s. The Miller-Urey experiments? The what? Miller-Urey experiments in 53? Yeah, yeah. That, Those yeah, aren't that the only familiar. ones. Those aren't the only ones, but yeah. <clears throat> and uh, there was uh, like seven of the uh, proteins that were required for life. Sure. Out of the, like, 27? Yeah. So, um, has there been uh, experiments recently? There are <laughs> ongoing experiments all the time. And uh, John Oro has done experiments as well. You can look those up. Um, no, we haven't produced every single uh, element or every single protein that's required for life. The point was that from non-living material, we have produced living material, the basic building blocks of life, amino acids and, and proteins. That's it. Okay. It, that's all you okay. need to kill off. And we don't have to, we don't have to sh you know, sh shake up a test tube and apply electricity and have a frog come out. We, we just, the argu their argument is that it is impossible for life to come from non-life. And we've already demonstrated in the laboratory many, many times that the basic building blocks of life can actually come from non-living material. And as long as that's possible, the rest is possible. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't expect, yet, like you said, like a frog to come out, but yeah. I, I was thinking, you know, like uh, all the building blocks would need to be there. No, and there's lots, there's lots of different objections, too, about whether or not they're left-handed or right-handed, and, and people will say, and the point, is, the point there is that you don't get to define what, it's like, like the people who claim that if the, the Earth's tilt was slightly off, life would, would, would no longer exist. Well, yeah, life as you know it, but what other possible life is there? Um, they're making a broad statement that absolutely, under no circumstances, can living material come from non-living material. Therefore, we need this supernatural God guy to intervene. And what science has done is demonstrated, you know what, we can get th some of this living material from non-living material. And we've only been working on this for about 50 years or so. Um, okay. You know, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. life itself had millions and billions of years, so. Okay, one more quick question that's been bothering me. Um, I watch a lot of debates uh, with uh, Dinesh D'Souza and, oh. uh, you know, Hitchens and uh, uh, some, of, some of the other guys, and morality comes up. And uh, uh, the theists like to bring up, well, where do you get your basis for morality? And I'm always screaming out, um, well, I provide the basis for that morality. And to, and to me, it, it it's kind of irrelevant where the basis comes from and it doesn't it doesn't really matter as long as uh the group as a whole agrees on what's going to perpetuate you know the community yeah. is that i mean does that make sense when I, mean, I i i find that you know when i hear religious people talking uh you know asking about a basis for morality what they're really asking is an authority for morality that's what they're really getting at. It's like, well, we can tell them all kinds of stuff about how, well, we observe the world around us and we see what kinds of consequences come for our actions. And we decide then on the basis of, you know, you know watching what the actual consequences are, we decide what sorts of ways to behave are productive and which ones aren't. And what they're really asking is not it's obviously not what the basis is, because that would be the basis. What they're asking is, you know, who died and made you God? That's what they're asking. They say, well, it doesn't matter. You're, you're, you can't, we, we have this imaginary friend who is so smart that everything he says about what behaviors are right and wrong are, uh, is automatically right. How can you be automatically right? You can't. Therefore, you can't provide a basis for morality. 
Well, you know, how do you respond to that? Right. They say, well, yeah, they say, well, you know, you can't, it, it, you can rape somebody because it's just molecules in motion. And it doesn't, that's neither right and that, wrong, apparently they're so. living in a universe where raping people leads to good consequences. Yeah, this is the same thing that, that a previous caller was trying to do as well. The, the claim that if human beings are merely physical matter, then everything is up for grabs and every, you know, it all goes out the window and rape is just you know, molecules in motion. Um, no, it's more than that. And the reason is because we've defined it and declared it to be so. We, as thinking, caring, empathetic uh, human beings who, who are alive and who share space with others, we have gone and over the course of time constructed this kind of ethical uh, or this ethos about how, what we think is right and wrong. And it's from very simple beginnings. I'd rather not be dead. So I'm going to say it's wrong to kill me, and it's in my best interest to surround myself with other people who think right. it's wrong to kill them. Right. And you build but where do you there. get the authority to make such decisions? From us. Absolutely. Right. And what I don't understand is why is that not good enough for the theist? Because as soon as it's possible for human beings to have authority over stuff like that, it dethrones their god. Not only that, but it dethrones them. Right now, well, yeah. <laughs> right now, they're in complete agreement with their God, or one could argue that their God is in complete agreement with them. And as soon as you open up the possibility that they might be mistaken, that's catastrophic. As long as they've got God on their side, they can't be wrong. Boy, that's got to be comforting, but it doesn't make it true. Okay, guys, I really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Kyle. That's all I got, man. Thanks for your call. All Thanks right, keep up the good work. You too. We'll try.